So in this video, we are going to be looking at uh, the topic on mutation, more specifically gene mutation. Now, there are two types of mutation, by the way, gene mutation and also chromosomal mutation. Uh, but for the purpose of um, Cambridge A-levels, we are just going to be focusing on gene mutation because that's in the syllabus. Now, gene mutation just basically means it is a random change in the base sequence of the gene or the DNA. In the exam, if you if you want to use the word be, random change in base sequence of the gene, that's accepted, or random change in the base sequence of the DNA, that is also accepted as well. Keywords over here is random change, which means to say that mutations are unpredictable. You cannot, we cannot say for sure when mutation is going to happen. Yes, there are certain risk factors that will increase the chances of mutations, but um, at the end of the day, there is an unpredictability when it comes to mutation. One way in which mutations may occur is due to errors during DNA replication. If you remember, DNA replication happens during the S phase of the cell cycle, and the DNA is replicated to form two new DNA molecules, which have to be identical. Now, as you can see, one DNA molecule that has been synthesized is exactly identical to the template, right? But if you look at the second DNA molecule, where the part where I've highlighted, um, an error has occurred. Because if you see the template strand, the template strand has guanine pairing up with cytosine. But in the new DNA molecule, adenine mistakenly pairs up with cytosine. Now, can this happen? Chances of this happening is quite rare, okay? And even if it does occur, it usually gets corrected because there are DNA repair enzymes that will, you know, go through the new DNA molecule to see if any mistakes are made and they will have to correct it. But in some cases, the enzymes missed out this mistake. You know, sometimes it just does happen and a mutation has already occurred because as you can see, I'm circling out the, the template sequence, ACGCTTA, but the new sequence is now ACACTTA. So the base sequence of the gene has randomly changed. That is gene mutation. Now, another way in which gene mutations can occur is by damage to the DNA due to mutagens, all right? Mutagens are just basically things that cause mutation. For example, radiation, gamma radiation, or carcinogens such as TAR. Now, for example, the mutation, for example, let's say radiation is exposed to the DNA and the DNA strands break okay or the nucleotides are just displaced now when this happens we don't usually have to worry because we have enzymes inside the cell that will go oh we need to repair it but the problem is what happens when during the repair they put the wrong sequences inside so instead of putting a gc where they're supposed to put it they put a t uh, thymine and adenine instead, which I've highlighted, which I've uh, drawn out in red. So as you can see, the base sequences over there have also changed from the original sequence. ACG, CTTA, and on the new sequence, it is ACTCTTA. So these kind of things can also occur, which cause gene mutation. Now, is gene mutation serious? So the author seems to think that gene mutation, the severity of gene mutation depends on the situation. Uh, we will see some examples of gene mutation later, all right? Uh, but what we want to see now is how does gene mutation actually affect protein synthesis? Okay, so there are a few types of mutation that we have to look at when we are covering gene mutation. The first thing we want to see is something called base substitution, where the base is randomly, the base sequence or one of the bases is randomly changed or substituted. Now, I have the mRNA table there as a reference on the left, and what I'm going to do is, 
When we are studying the effects of gene mutation, it is always good to compare a normal gene and a mutated gene. It makes it easier for us to understand, ah, okay, this is, this is why gene mutation can be quite bad. Now, I'm drawing out a gene over here, and this gene has a base sequence of TAC, GCC, ACC, CTT, and ACT. This is just my normal. This is just a base sequence that I like to go for. And the highlighted part is the template strand because that's the one that will undergo transcription. So when it undergoes transcription, it produces the mRNA with five codons, AUG, CGG, UGG, GAA, and UGA. And during translation, AUG will code for methionine, CGG will code for arginine, UGG will code for tryptophan, GAA will code for glutamic acid, and UGA is a stop codon. And now we have synthesized a normal polypeptide with four amino acids, as you can see over there. So that's a normal, a normal gene coding for a normal polypeptide. Now let's Let's see what happens if B substitution occurs when the gene undergoes mutation. So let's say in this mutated gene, the base GCC has randomly mutated into GCT. I've highlighted the T, I've written down the T in red to show you where the substitution has occurred. So when transcription happens, GCT will be transcribed into CGA instead of CGG, right? Now, here's the interesting thing. If you look at the normal gene, CGG will translate into the amino acid arginine, but here's the weird thing. Codon CGA also translates into the amino acid arginine because remember, the DNA code can be degenerate. Degenerate meaning to say multiple codons can translate or can code for the same amino acids. So in this case, even though the gene has undergone mutation, right, the base sequence is different, the polypeptide is exactly the same between the normal polyp, between the, the one on the left and the one on the right. So here's an example of a mutation not causing any effects upon protein synthesis. So a lot of students go, oh, well, well, then mutation is not a bad thing. Not necessarily, because sometimes B substitutions can happen in different ways. For example, in this case over here, the mutation happens at the CTT area where it is substituted to CAT. And CAT is then transcribed to the codon GUA, all right? And here's where it becomes interesting because the codon GAA codes for glutamic acid, but the codon GUA codes for a different amino acid called valine. So here, the primary structure of the polypeptide is now different because the polypeptide on the left has methionine, arginine, tryptophan, and glutamic acid as a sequence, but the one on the right has methionine, arginine, tryptophan, and valine as its amino acid sequence. So the two polypeptides will have some differences because, hey, the primary structure is different. Now, why is this serious? I will explain this part later because if you remember, or let's just talk about it a little bit, when the primary structure of the protein changes, it will affect its secondary and tertiary structure, which may then later affect the functionality of the protein. And we will see some examples of how uh, the functionality of the protein is affected in a different video. Now, another way base substitution can be quite problematic is if the, one of the bases uh, is also changed from ACC to ACT, all right? And the mRNA will now be different where instead of UGG, it is now transcribed into UGA. And here's where it becomes interesting because when translation also occurs, UGA is a stop codon. So the stop codon occurs so much more earlier than it was supposed to. Therefore, the process of translation will then stop prematurely. Okay, so instead of producing a protein with four amino acids, the protein now only has two amino acids. Therefore, the polypeptide is now shortened.
So you can get base substitutions where there is no effect on the polypeptide sequence. You can get a base substitution where the amino acid sequence is changed because due to the change of one amino acid, or you can also get a base substitution where a stop codon occurs much earlier, causing the polypeptide to become shorter. So it really depends on which base substitution occurs. Okay, these are the three possible um, effects or yeah, three possible consequences of it. Now, the next type of gene mutation that we have to look at is something called base addition. Now, in base addition, a base is randomly added. To understand base addition in detail, I am going to have to put the, if you notice, if you look at the normal gene, I'm drawing out rectangles to frame in three bases, every three bases. TAC is put into one frame, GCC is put into one frame, ACC, CTT, ACT all have their own frames. And even the mRNA codons are also put into specific frames. Okay, There's a reason for this because it helps us understand uh, the effects of base addition. So these are the frames. Right Now, let's say a mutation occurs where a base has been added. So let's say the DNA accidentally broke due to damage, remember, due to radiation and such. And instead of just rejoining it, the enzymes accidentally added a base in between. So, uh, so now there is a base adenine between the two cytosine bases. Right? So this is a mutated gene due to base addition. So will there be an effect? Let's draw out the frames for every three bases. The first frame is the same, TAC, but the second frame has changed. It has become GCA. The third frame is CAC. The fourth frame is CCT. And the fifth frame is TAC. I want you to take some time to compare the frames of the mutated gene and the frames of the normal gene. There is a big change that has occurred in the basis of the frames. All right? And in this case, we call this frame shift mutation. And when frame shift mutation occurs, I've highlighted it for you to make it very simple for you as well uh, to see the difference of the frames. The codons also change significantly. The first codon is AUG, second one is CGU, third is GUG, fourth is GGA, and the fifth is AUG. Compare the two mRNAs and see how significant the changes are. So how will it affect the polypeptide sequence? It will significantly affect the polypeptide sequence. The first two polypeptides are fine because CGG codes for arginine and CGU also codes for arginine because, well, the DNA code is degenerate, but everything after that has become different. So the polypeptide has become altered compared to the normal polypeptide and they will have different primary structures. So base addition will lead to something called frame shift mutation, which can cause the polypeptide sequence to be significantly changed. And the third type of mutation is, uh, the third type of gene mutation is base uh, deletion, where the base is randomly deleted. I'm putting in the frames for you to just basically as a comparison. Now let's say due to a damage to the DNA, the strands got separated, okay? And instead of re-adding uh, more nucleotides where, that they're supposed to, the enzymes just attach the two strands together. So now the base sequence has become shortened. So let's look at the frame. The first frame is still fine, TAC, but the second, third, and fourth frames are all significantly changed. Please compare the normal gene and the mutated gene. Okay. So in this case, frame shift mutation will also still occur. And when the frame shift mutation occurs, the codons are also significantly changed. And therefore, the polypeptide sequence becomes totally different, changing the primary structure of the polypeptide. So this is how gene mutations can actually affect protein synthesis in the cell. So in base addition and base deletion, they are usually more serious to the effect of the protein synthesis due to this concept of frame shift mutations, uh, which will usually 
significantly alter the amino acid sequences of the polypeptide.